Lately, I've seen a lot of videos that we are on the verge of a collapse. You know, I call them sometimes the fear-mongering videos, but of course, there can be truth in those videos. I think we're all familiar with the domino effect, where, you know, the dominoes are all lined up. <laughs> yes, there's Xander's tail. That's my little photobomb effect. Anyway, and one domino falls and then all the rest go down. Well, are we in a potential domino effect? I thought I'd talk with you today about what I see as some of those domino threats that might be teetering a little and my analysis, you know, for what it's worth. So let's get started. Now for domino number one, and I bought these at the dollar store thinking they were normal dominoes until I opened them up. They're micro dominoes, but they still work. So for my number one concern, it is, is it the pandemic? No, it's not. Is it war? No. You know what it is? Cyber security. That's right. I am worried about cyber warfare. And let me tell you why. Here's a recent Article in Discover magazine, cyber attacks on healthcare are rising, but many hospitals aren't prepared. In 2017, we had the WannaCry ransomware hack in United Kingdom's National Health Service, and it affected over 80,000 hospitals for surgery cancellations and shuttered certain emergency departments. Last year, over a third of healthcare organizations said they had encountered ransomware. Well, and just recently, we had a hospital hit in Newfoundland. And you know, uh, I own a medical billing company, so I'm kind of aware of some of these things. And most healthcare institutions have went to a digitized medical record, you know, no longer the paper record. And so if something happens and you can't access that record, that can cause problems for the patients. But there is also the problem where most of the testing equipment and other equipment used in the hospital or even in doctor's offices sometimes are digitized to some effect. And hackers can work in sometimes through that equipment and get into the main system. It can cause a real, real problem. It could cause deaths. It can cause a lot of mix-ups and delays. And it truly, truly is a risk in today's electronic medical record systems. And what about water? You know, in February, an unknown hack group of hackers were able to gain access to the system that a water treatment plant uses in Florida. The attack attempted to poison the water supply by increasing the sodium hydroxide, which is what most of us know as lye but it did get thwarted. But here is a quote from the 2019 report by the American Water Works Association. Quote, just one year earlier, the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI warned that the Russian government was specifically targeting the water sector and other critical infrastructure as part of a multi-stage intrusion campaign. Well, what about energy? Now, I think we all remember the Colonial Pipeline attack earlier this year. That pipeline supplies 45% of the East Coast supply of diesel, gasoline, and jet fuel, and it was impacted by a ransom attack. In nearly two weeks, some American motors were forced to wait for fuels for hours. Now in Iran, there has been a major attack. All of the gas stations in Iran unable to produce gas. The whole country affected, which kind of ironic considering Iran is the major exporter of oil, but just shows you 
what can happen. Now they suspect it was either Israel or the U.S. or the Israel and U.S. together attacking them. How about food? I think it was last week or the week before a Wisconsin dairy plant, a huge plant, was hit with a hack and they were unable to process the raw milk. And how about earlier this year with JBI? And JBI is meat packing plants in both the United States and Australia. And the U.S., they supply more than a fifth of all U.S. beef. And they had a crippling attack. So it's happening in all different sectors. It could even be where someone hacks into a satellite. And what happens if there is a coordinated attack on all of these sectors at once? Could this domino fall? Okay, the next domino is war. Every time I hear that, it's like, war. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Anyway, that song always comes to my mind. I used to sing it when I was in high school at lunchtime, all the boys. Anyway, war. You know, you hear a lot that China might invade Taiwan. North Korea wants to do something bad to the United States. But now we have this. China's weapon test close to a Sputnik moment, U.S. General says. They, what they've done has taken us by surprise because they have joined two different technologies. The launch of a missile that completed a partial orbit of the Earth and a hypersonic vehicle that could plow a sudden shifting path. Now, this wasn't completely successful, but what it is right now, we expect a missile to do elliptical orbit, right? And instead, if they can get one to do a zigzag orbit, our missile defense systems would be crippled. We couldn't shoot that missile down. Now, the United States is working on such a program, so is Russia, even North Korea. But this doesn't bode well. And you have to wonder if this will put us in a new Cold War, a new period again where we keep escalating nuclear weapons. You know, the Doomsday Clock by the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists has put us at 100 seconds before 12 o'clock, before midnight. And midnight stands for the apocalypse. If this keeps on going, we're going to get even less time before what they figure will be a nuclear catastrophe. And of course, we have the pandemic. Now, I should say a pandemic. Right now, has the current pandemic caused a lot of problems? Yes, it has. But you know, I read The Hot Zone oh, almost 30 years ago, I think. And it's what's made me start worrying about a worldwide pandemic. I don't think this is the one I'm worried about. This was terrible, all the lives lost, but this didn't have the kill rate that I'm worried about. So I think a new pandemic could still be coming. And it could be coming from the animal world. 75% of new diseases are all zoonotic in nature, which means they come from animals to humans. And if you think of the overall uh, fatality rate in SARS was about 10%, and I think between 40 and 75% for the Nipah virus, and it could be even 88% for Ebola, there's a lot worse pandemics out there that could still happen. And when you think of how woefully unprepared countries, international organizations, and citizens were for a pandemic, this is certainly a domino to consider. Supply chain, we've all been hearing a lot about that, right? About how it's broken, how it's not working. 
you know, it's rare to purchase something 100% made in America. We depend on a lot of goods that are produced or components of goods that we purchase are produced in other countries. And lately, that has caused a major problem. Now, I found this image on News for Kids to attempt to explain the supply problem to kids. One of the problems is that the industry is built on lean principles, which means you really don't keep much inventory on hand, you don't want slack, not much in the warehouses. Well, then you have a national labor shortage, left warehouse companies scrambling for employees, U.S. ports not having manpower, and of course the trucker situation, which was suffering before this happened. The trucking industry is reporting a shortage of over 80,000 drivers and warehouse industry 490,000 job openings. And of course the pandemic caused countries to lock down, not export goods or even produce goods. And then when they did, there was problems and the ports, there was too much waiting to be unpacked. And then people didn't have enough boxcars to be able to send stuff. Anyway, definitely a problem right now. You know, if you listen to the, re the media, it's like, oh no, you may not be able to get that special Christmas present for your loved one, unless you hurry up and buy it now. You know, to me, that's not the big problem for the supply system. You can always get a gift card, right? The big problem is essential supplies. I mean, look what happened when the pandemic first started and the United States couldn't even get enough protective masks for our hospital employees. That is a real supply chain problem. Next one, controversial, climate change. You know, whether you believe in climate change or not, and I have to admit, I believe the climate is changing. I believe humans have some effect on it but I also believe nature has the most effect. Does that mean that we shouldn't be prudent and do all we can to lower our carbon use and whatever it is we're supposed to do? Of course not. But climate change has been causing problems. I mean, there has been droughts and wildfires and even flooding especially if you live in California. I mean, look at this. This was from October 28th of this year. Look at the areas having severe drought in California. This is a real problem depending on where you live and it will be a problem for some time. And last year, look at this. These were all the billion dollar weather and climate disasters. So climate change is costing us a lot of money. Next, energy. You know, we're facing a new threat here in the United States. Uh, crude oil has risen 64% to a seven year high. Natural gas has, uh, I believe, doubled over a six month period and heating oil has risen 68% this year. So now we've been assured in Michigan that if we are our electricity and our uh, natural gas is going to stay about the same as last year, that they were able to stockpile it or whatever they do. So we're not going to be affected. But in many areas of the country, you are going to be. And what you pay to heat your home, but also what you pay to fill your gas tank. So here's Gas Buddy, and this is from October 21st. And you can see it really varies how much you pay for gas. Again, if you're in California, you are paying in excess of $4.53 a gallon. That's their average. Wow. Now where I live, we've been seeing maybe about $3.19, kind of goes back and forth. So not too bad, but of course with the lower gas prices, a lot of people have returned and bought SUVs and 
other vehicles that consume more gasoline. So they're getting a surprise at the pump. Next one, the stock market, right? I have never completely understood the stock market. To me, it is gambling, but I guess everybody does it. It's a legalized type of gambling. And there's been various experts that say, it's going to crash, it's going to crash. We have Michael uh, Berry, Berry saying uh, that it's the greatest speculative bubble of all times and all things. The big short fame uh, person who runs Skyon Asset Management says that there's been speculative excess, you know, but they've been saying this for like over three years. And I'm not saying that at some time the stock market won't have a downturn. It will. The stock market goes up and how high it goes up, it's got to come down, right? It's got to go like that. So yes, we're going to have a downturn. And yes, the downturn will affect me and my 401k because I'm retirement age. I haven't retired, but it will affect my 401k that I expect to use when I finally do retire. It's going to happen sometime. The question is to what extent it happens. Will it be a crash like 1929? You know, I don't think so, but it will happen at some time. We just don't know when. And inflation, right? Been hearing a lot about that. A lot of channels are saying, oh my God, the U.S. is becoming Venezuela. You know, we're having hyperinflation. Well, we are experiencing inflation, but not hyperinflation. Usually hyperinflation is like 50% increase over each month or something. I don't know, really, really high. We aren't seeing that, but this is what we are seeing. We're definitely spiking month to month. I mean, look at that. But remember that when we talk about inflation generally, it's over a 12 month period. So over a 12 month period, we're talking about 5.4%. Now some Segments of the market are up much higher than that, but that is the overall inflation for 12 months. Still not good, but not hyperinflation. So we have housing. You know, we bought our first house in 1979. I was expecting, so we decided to move out of the apartment. We needed a house and it was $44,000. And it came with a I think it was three quarters of an acre, uh, pretty spacious. I think maybe it was about 1800 square feet, very nice neighborhood. Now, last year, my youngest son moved out of our house and bought his own house, his first home. It was newly constructed and he paid about $245,000, much smaller lot than we had. And it was in, a new development. So 44,000, 245,000, big difference. So I have this chart here that shows historical home prices. So our house was pretty much near it. Uh, it's almost 42,000 in 77. And in May of this year, it was 329,000. The Financial Times have said that the rate of housing price increase has been higher than any point in the previous 30 years. And one of the reasons is with the pandemic, everything was kind of shut down. We couldn't have new construction. And of course the cost of materials to produce homes, all of that has really increased. And then because of all the low, low mortgage rates, more people want a house. So we have really high demand and not as many houses available. So the prices went way up. Next, we have infrastructure. And we just passed, uh, the House and the Senate passed a huge infrastructure bill, scaled down from what it was. But you know, as a country, 
we have spent much less on infrastructure than other countries and we are behind in many areas. We also, I mean, the roads in a lot of areas of Michigan is pretty darn embarrassing and bridges have collapsed. We, of course, are having a severe water problem. I mean, here in Michigan, we had the Flint water crisis, right? And now here we are, we have another one in Benton Harbor and other areas in the United States are having them too. So infrastructure problems are occurring. You know, I just hope with some of that money and that new bill, it really goes to Michigan because we seem to not ever get as big a piece of pie as a lot of other states. Just saying. So what's my conclusion? You know, got a lot of dominoes. And some of them are teetering back and forth, right? Am I worried that domino will knock down all the other dominoes? No, I don't think I'm worried. Am I concerned? Yes. But, you know, a lot of Americans living today have not experienced high inflation, cold war, oil embargo, and I could go on and on. You live long enough, and I am over 67 years old, I like to think 67 years young, and your perspective kind of changes. Hey, seen it before, seen it worse. Eh, maybe it's gonna happen, we'll see. You know, I was born in 1955, a booming time in the United States. But when I graduated from college in 1977, not so much. And then I got married in 1977, then in 1980, we started our family with both of us working full time. And of course we bought that house in 1979. Well, you remember when I talked about that house, you know? Yeah, you know what our mortgage rate was? It was 12% and we considered ourselves lucky. I mean, it was like, wow. Other people were paying much more. I think it went up to almost 18%. So when I see my son's mortgage rate for under 3%, it's almost like, I can't believe it. Yes, you paid a hell of a lot more for your home, but boy, you're not paying nearly as much in your interest rates. So I just thought I'd show you the 30 year mortgage rates um, and how they compare to what it was and how they are now. Now, when I graduated in 1977, I was lucky enough to get a job. It was in the nonprofit sector and I got paid $8,500 a year. <laughs> Not much. But unemployment in Michigan at that time was over 8%, so I felt lucky to have a job and it rose to 14.5% unemployment in 1983 when my husband lost his job for an extended period of time. I thought I'd show you this chart. It shows the different inflation rates over the years. You can kind of see how it is when you were born and to what it is now. And there was an article in The Guardian that said, quote, the American cost of living increased 133% between 1972 and 1982. And on December 17th, 1978, OPEC representatives announced their decision to raise export prices by 14.5% during the coming year. That led to even more severe economic problems that have no present day parallels. The Consumer Price Index in May and June 1979 disclose a 12.5% annual inflation rate. Average gasoline prices had risen 55% since January and oil prices had doubled in just over half a year. By June 23, 1979, AAA reported that 58% of the nation's gas stations were closed because of low inventories. Yeah, there was even fist fights because people had such long lines waiting for gasoline. I mean, it happened. But a lot of people nowadays don't remember it. Maybe they weren't old enough to remember it. So the catalog of problems that people faced in the 70s included double digit inflation, double digit unemployment, 20% mortgage rates, the collapse of the manufacturing sector, a 600% jump in the price of gold, 
and a 300% rise in the price of basic consumer goods. So yeah, prices are going up at the supermarket, at the gas station, and they might get much worse. But you know, I've already been there, I've already done that. But the difference is, we did it. I don't know, we just thought this is something we're gonna live through. It will get better. We were always optimistic. And you know what? It did get better. People now just seem like any little thing that happens, wham, you know, it's the end of the world. Now, my mother was born in a homestead in North Dakota, and I mean, you know, no running water, no uh, external heating, electricity back then, anything like that. I mean, it was pre-depression type living. And when she married my father in 1928, they had to borrow money for a marriage license and they had to live with a family member. And you know, the depression happened and they had their first child. But I never heard them talk about how terrible it was, just how lucky they were. They didn't view things with doom and gloom. They were always optimistic and felt lucky to have what they had. And I feel like we're increasingly an, entire, an entitled populace who whines about every hardship, you know, wearing a mask, Oh my God, I won't be able to breathe. I mean, that's not what I consider a hardship. And views every downturn in the economy and events spun negatively by the media. Could all these dominoes fall? Of course they could. It's definitely in the realm of possibility. There might be even a domino I haven't considered. Maybe aliens will invade. But, you know, it doesn't make sense to over worry about things that really aren't in your control. You should still continue to prep. You prep because it just makes sense. You don't prep out of fear of what might happen. Enjoy your life and appreciate everything you do have. This is Prepper Potpourri saying, Please subscribe, share the knowledge, and as always, thank you so, so much for your support.